الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى علي وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم ومن يشاكك الرسول من بعد ما تبين له حدا ويعتبي غير سبيل المؤمنين نوله ما تولى ونسله جهنم وساءت مصيرا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kaneem, and this is a stern warning for those who differ with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mean differ with the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and differ with ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and ahl hadith and ahl athar. Because ahl athar wa ahl hadith wa ahl sunnah, the salaf al-salih, their path is the sabil al-mu'mineen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever differs with the messenger, after it is come to them clear that which is clear from guidance and follows other than the path of uh, the mu'mineen then we will leave him with those whom he has followed you know and who he loves and burn him and jahannam and what an evil destination so here we see a stern warning from Allah Azza wa Jal to be on the path of the believers. And it's a stern warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we also see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَمَنْ يَشَاكِكَ الرَّسُولُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنْ لَهُ حُدَى that the person who differs with the messenger after it has become clear to them, that guidance has become clear, letting us know that guidance has to be clear to someone. La bud min aqamatul hujja. You know, it is absolutely a necessity that proof or clarity and guidance and evidence has been established. That means people have to have the opportunity to gain knowledge so they know what's right and wrong. People have to know and have the knowledge so they know what is kufr and what is shirk and what is iman and what is tawheed. They need to be able to know and distinguish. And this is the point of why in some situations people may be excused by ignorance, by being new to Islam, by ta'wil and things like this of this nature. So this is one of the evidences for that. And it shows us that we have to follow the Sabil al Mu'mineen. Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his tafsir of this ayah, he says, Ay, woman you khalif Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wu you anidahu, fima ja'a bihi, min badi ma tabayin lahu huda, bi dila il al Quraniya wa barahin, an nabawiya. وَيَأْتَبَى غَيْرِ سَبِيلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَسَبِيلُهُمْ هُوَ طَرِيكِهِمْ فِي أَقَاعِدِهِمْ وَعَمَالِهِمْ So Imam uh, Sa'di, he says about this verse, he says that it means that whoever differs with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they have kibr, يُعَانِدُهُ that they have uh, arrogance towards the sunnah. You, you tell them the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and they react with arrogance and they are obstinate in in uh, uh, following the sunnah. And I want you to uh, uh, understand, Habatifillah, this is different than the one who, maybe they don't accept it right of, uh, away because of their weakness and because of their, their, their weakness in knowledge, their weakness in iman and their weakness in ilm. So don't say, oh, I established the proof on someone. This is a big facade that we've seen Perhaps throughout history, but we at least have experienced this uh, being in the lands of scholarship with many students of knowledge. And we've heard the Mashaikh mention this, these uh, anecdotes many times, countless times of, of students of knowledge in different localities who said, Hey, I established a proof on you, Ahi, you better leave Sheikh so-and-so or you're off it. Or we're going to warn against you. Or we're going to make Hajar of you. Or we're going to 
perhaps even be violent towards you. This is the facade, uh, uh, facade in, in Arabic, you know, the, the wickedness that uh, has become prevalent because of a, a, a nur min a jahl, uh, because of a type of ignorance about this, that people don't have always the hikmah and the fiqh and the wisdom on how to approach uh, uh, these issues and how to approach someone who is sin, sinful and how to give advice to someone and how to advise someone if they're falling into mukhalifat or they've fallen into bid'ah. That you have to have hikmah and wisdom. You don't all just immediately say he's a mubtadiyah. He's an innovator. This one is a wicked fasik. This one is this, this one is this. Quickly striving to make a hukum on someone. This is a very dangerous thing. So we have to be careful of this. And know that it's not from the sunnah. And know that it's not from a deen and a seha. That is not from, uh, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the religion is sincere advice. That's not from sincere advice. So Imam Sa'adi, he said that the one who was, who was being arrogant towards uh, the sunnah, ma ja'abihi, what the Prophet ﷺ came with, meaning the sunnah. So the one who's arrogant, they don't want to accept the truth. This one is in a different situation than the one who perhaps is ignorant and maybe there's some time given to that person. And no, we can't give you an exact time. We can't say, oh, this one, you have to give one week. This one should get six hours. No. But when you're giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to have wisdom. And this is for the faqih. This is for the one who is blessed with that kind of wisdom that perhaps that guidance will come. But some people, they don't. They yastajim. They're so quick to make a hukum. They're like, no, 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 no. You have innovated. And I established the proof. I told you, Sheikh so-and-so was off it, and you still went. I saw you at the lecture of Talib al-M so-and-so, and we warned you against him. So then... They're quickly, they don't want to give anybody a chance, which would be more in accordance with the sunnah than what they're upon. So this is why it's very important of, of really gaining fiqh fi deen. Man yirid Allah bi khayrin yifaqo fi deen. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Whoever Allah wants, whenever Allah wants good for a person, gives him fiqh fi deen. Gives him understanding of the deen. That is a ni'mah min ni'amillah. It's a ni'mah min ni'amillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us fiqh fi deen. Imam Sa'di, he then mentioned the, the second part of the ayah, he, he mentioned, مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنْ لَهُ هُدَى You know, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after, uh, 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 you know, huda guidance has been made clear for them. To bayin lahu huda. He didn't just say, he gave them guidance, he just threw guidance at them, but instead, to bayin lahu huda. You know, this is that tibyan, that, 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 that clarity, that clarification. There's so much. Uh, there's so many implications if we improve our Arabic and we can get, you know, a bit more into the language, and a bit more into what the ulama are saying. This is why I advise the youth also to get Arabic and get it strong. And this is something that I want even for myself to improve my Arabic, to be stronger, to really. There's so much we miss because of our either weakness or our total absence of Arabic. So we have to strive to better ourselves and improve ourselves and gain. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيِّنْ لَهُ بَيِّنْ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيِّنْ لَهُ هُدَى After Huda guidance has been made clear. And subhanAllah, this is one of the things that the scholars, uh, especially the issue of takfir. So we're going to, I'm making this a bit broad. Outside the tafsir of this ayah. But we're going to just bring up Messiah and we're just going to give it to you. One of the things the Mashaikh, uh, uh, the scholars of, of, uh, of Aqidah and so forth, when they talk about the issue of takfir, and they talk about something which is so important because this is a condition of takfir, meaning it's something that must be prevalent before making takfir. You, th that this condition must be in place. Is that, uh, uh, that uh, a part of that is to qama alayya al-hujjah. That you must establish the proof. So the scholars even differ about this concept. Scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, they differ on this concept, this intricate, this is an intricate 
a mas'ala within a mas'ala within a mas'ala. You know, within this issue of takfir, within this issue which has to do with iman, and it has to do with uh, many other uh, branches in the religion. It also has to do with the science of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, making a hukum on someone. Okay? And so, with regards to this concept of, of, of uh, establishing the, the evidence for someone, some of the scholars say, which I don't hold this view, and this makes a big difference in making a hukum on someone. The, you know, there are some people, they take this first opinion, which I'm going to introduce, which is, <coughs> which is that it's sufficient to just read an ayah, you know, to just, to, to basically just uh, give the person the proof, regardless of whether fahim hujja. So this issue is, it has to do with whether they understand the proof or not. I believe, and I'm not going to get deep into this issue, but according to the evidence and according to even logic, which we're going to put in there too, because we do have an aql. It's not that we throw the aql away. Aql sunnah has never been away from the aql, but it's that given the pre, given precedence to your intellect over the nasus, making your aql the judgment, basing your judgment just on your intellect over the text, the divine text, and in contradiction to the text. So the point is, Ahabitifillah, that some say that it's sufficient just to give the proof. But this ayat even, matabayin lahu, you know, to making this tibyan, clarifying for someone so that they understand. It's not just clarifying you gave them the tafsir. For example, if you have a Muslim, he's a, a Uyghur, and he doesn't speak any English, and he doesn't speak Arabic, and you come to him, and you only speak Arabic, and you see something, maybe he's fallen into an issue of shirk, or uh, an issue of, uh, of kufr, because he's been denied Islamic knowledge. It's been, he's been reprogrammed, he's been repressed, but he does believe in Islam. So he's doing, he fell into something that nullifies his Islam. And then you, as someone who speaks only Arabic, you go and you give him an ayah, you give him a hadith in the Arabic language, and you explain it. You give him aqwal of the ulama, statements of the scholars, statements of the salaf al-salih, ridwan alayhi from the sahaba to the first three generations, and you give him evidence and from the ulama after them. And he doesn't understand a thing that you're saying. He doesn't even understand the language you're speaking in. And then you say, I established the proof on him. I gave him ayat, and I gave him hadith, and I gave him aqwal al-salaf, and I gave him aqwal al-ulama, and it's up to him. He does, he does not cease him, he's a disbeliever. So then you make the takfir, okay? This is just an example, but this is to give you an idea of how this mas'ala, and how these, how these issues, some of these issues have transpired, and where you have differences between uh, some scholars of Ahl sunnah who hold that view, and also the takfiris, who also hold uh, that view, similar to that view. This is this is something. And then another group of Ahl Sunnah say, La, la'azm, you must faham al hajjah The person needs to understand, which makes sense. I mean, you throw this at this person, and all of a sudden they're supposed to, they don't even know what you're talking about. Whether, regardless of whether you gave them Quran and Sunnah, because they don't understand. They don't understand the language of Kitab and Sunnah. And they've had no opportunity. My point is, so there's a difference in that. And that's why we're talking about clarifying the Huda which is imperative for us to understand. Imam Sa'di, he says, after that, he says, مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنْ لَهُ هُدَى After Huda, you know, guidance has been clarified, he says, he mentions what kind of Huda, uh, uh, what kind of clarification needs to take place. He says, بِدَلَاءِ الْقُرْآنِيَّةِ وَبَرَاهِينَ نَبَوِيَّةِ He says, basically, that... Uh, Proofs, evidences from the Quran, Quranic ayat, and barahim, you know, clarity, that which is totally clear, clear uh, evidence from the, the, the sunnah, nabawiyah, from the Prophet, meaning kitab was sunnah. 
that it needs to be clarified. That's how you make, it's not just your arguments, brother, you shouldn't do this because, you know, it really looks like this and it seems like this. No. The real hujjah, the real proof, and the barahin is coming from the book and the sunnah. Okay? Doesn't mean we don't use intellect. Doesn't mean you don't establish, and sometimes you may not have the hujjah with you, but you know that it's incorrect in general from general meanings. But the asal of this hujjah, the asal of this barhan, the asal of this, this tibyan is coming from the book and the sunnah. And then he says, And they follow غَيْرَ other than the, the سَبِيلَ mu'minin, the path of the believers. He says about this part of the ayah, he says, وَسَبِيلُهُمْ هُوَ طَرِيقُهُمْ فِي أَقَاعِدِهِمْ وَعْمَالِهِمْ Their path, their way, meaning the way of the mu'minin, is following their aqidah, the aqidah of Islam. And the a'mal of Islam. Letting us know that the men had just salaf. I know people don't want to hear it. The aqidah of the salaf of salih. Ittiqada ahlu sunnah. Hadha sabila mu'mineen. This is the path of the believers. Which we cannot accept that which differs and deviates from it. No matter how, how many times the person's been appointed by, uh, you know, George Bush and, uh, you know, or uh, uh, Obama and, um, and uh, Trump. It doesn't matter. What matters is what are they, are they uh, speaking about affairs from the book and the sunnah? According to the aqid of Ahl sunnah, Ahl hadith, the sabil mu'mineen, the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in. Is this what they're talking about? Is this where they're evident? Can we reference what they say their shirkiyat and their dancing practices and their singing with their sheikhs and, and moving their heads and singing? Can we authenticate that? Can we refer those practices back to the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sabilu Mu'minin, the menheads of the Salaf? Are their belief, is their belief system, is it really, and the ideology that they are, uh, uh, that they are propagating, is that in accordance with this? Aqidat Ahl Sunnah, we're talking about uh, the Ittiqad Ahl Sunnah, the Sabila Mu'mineen. And likewise, the manners and the methodology and the way that we interact with one another. Is this, you know, when we see somebody doing crazy stuff, even if they have the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah, are they following the Sabila Mu'mineen when they are being harsh and being quick and making uh, judgments on people and they are. Uh, making takfir of people and without the hujja, without the uh, the 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 wabit, the criterion for making takfir and the shurut of takfir, the conditions of takfir and the muana, the prohibitors of takfir, are they uh, are they following the sabila mu'minin? So that's what we have to ask ourselves, and we ask Allah wa Taala, the Almighty, to bless us in that which is correct and forgive us for our many many sins. Ya Rabbil Alamin, wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم